The leaderboard for your race to the South Pole is as follows. The Norwegians continue to open up their commanding lead over second place Team Mercury from Wales. The Welsh and the Norwegians have already passed their halfway mark, having completed their mandatory 24-hour stopover. The British and the South Africans have both arrived at the halfway mark, with the British team slightly ahead and will thus be allowed to leave before the South Africans. The sad news is that the Anglo-Dutch team EBB paper had to be taken to the halfway mark due to challenging health conditions and are now out of the race. The oceans, so formidable, so ancient, so reliable, as they hold the world in a delicate balance acting as the Earth's great life force. But can we be sure that this delicate balance will not experience a shift that could alter the way we live our lives? How do the oceans relate to another and how will they be affected by climate change? Yet more questions that SA's two adventurers, Bra Malharba and Peter von Kett, who are already halfway to the South Pole, will want to create awareness around. The Arctic Ocean, if you put it as an analogy of a, of a train, it is both the engine, the locomotive of the train, and the guard carriage of the train. In terms of being the locomotive is that a vast exchange of both gases, carbon dioxide in particular, and is drawn down into the, into the Antarctic Ocean, into the cold ocean, um, and it's, an oxygen is actually released. That balance, as far as we understand, is, is, works in that way. There's a large amount of thermal energy that's contained in that ocean, which obviously goes towards winter sea ice, the movements of the oceans, the interaction of that ocean with things like El Nino, which affect global climate. So it, has, it exerts a significant effect on the weather systems, and particularly in the southern hemisphere, on the weather systems and the climate systems of those of, of that region of the world. And that obviously has planetary significance in the longer term because the planet is not isolated um, in that respect. But what happens when what has worked in millennia has been tampered with? The sun, which is the perfect distance from the Earth, has always had its rays filtered by the ozone layer. How will this new added heat affect our oceans? Secondly, in terms of being the, the, if you like, the guard carriages, many of the large effects that we have seen around the world are impact directly onto Antarctica. One only has to think, for example, of, of depletion of stratospheric ozone, which has led, to, led rise to the hole in the Antarctic um, atmosphere. That has increased the incident rays of, of, of ultraviolet light into the, into the southern hemisphere. That has had significant impact in terms, and we're still only beginning to understand what those are, not only in terms of direct human health, but also in terms of affecting some of the productivity of the area so far that that certain um, of the phytoplankton that produces or releases oxygen may be affected by higher incident UVB light. Consequently, the whole balance between the sink of carbon dioxide and the release of oxygen in the Southern Ocean is, may be shifted and that will have a global effect. It's a tripwire as well as a driving force in the whole planet's health. The message is clear. Whatever man can do to restore nature's balance must be done. Let's hope a new sense of appreciation of the oceans and the way they work that we so take for granted can be restored. And the individual roles given to us to protect what is ours can be accepted by all.